everybody, it's Aaron at Aaron Tunes, and today I'm going to show you how to design a killer guitar pick. You know, um, over the course of my uh, music career and over the course of my career as a graphic designer, I've had the opportunity to design literally hundreds of picks. And uh, most of them have turned out pretty good. Some of them have been bombs. Um, and I've learned which kind of things work best and which don't work at all. Uh, and I'm going to try and share some of that with you by giving you my five top tips for designing a killer guitar pick. The first thing I want to say though is that um, if there's one thing I have learned, my pick manufacturer of choice is IntuneGP.com. I've used lots of different manufacturers, um, but they are my favorite and I, every time I've done something with them it's been very successful and I like the way they, they operate and everything. So. Uh, just so you know, they have not given me, given me anything for this. I've not received any perks. I'm not going to receive any kickbacks. They don't even know I'm doing this, but you are going to hear their name a lot and, um, just because that's who I use. Although the principles that I'm going to uh, put forth will work with any manufacturer. So anyway, with that behind us, uh, here are my five tips for designing a killer guitar pick. Number one, think small. As a graphic designer, uh, you know, it's, it's best practice whenever you're designing a logo to think about scalability. You want a logo that's equally appealing and recognizable, whether it's on a gigantic billboard or, you know, a little tiny bottle cap. Um, but today, that's even more important than ever because, you know, we have little phone icons and avatars and, and you know, just on the internet, little, little icons and stuff. So not only does it have to be uh, recognizable very small, but also when, when the story is told with just a very few amount of pixels. Uh, guitar picks are the same way. You're taking a band logo or something like that and you're shrinking it down to a very small size. So you've got to keep in mind um, that you're gonna lose a lot of detail when you do that. Now this is a pick that I designed for warmth um, and there is a lot of detail in the guitar the frets and the strings and you can see that that starts to get lost as the um, as the size goes down that's really pushing the level of how much detail that you could get in um, in a guitar pick so if you can simplify that in any way it's going to make for a better pick Tip number two, design with shapes and not lines. I have two picks here that are uh, actually both pretty similar because they both have wings that kind of spread out, um, but they turned out very different. This white one did not turn out very good at all. It's one of the, it's one of the worst <laughs> picks that I've done. This one is one of the favorite picks that I've done, and it's because the wings on this one are done with lines, and the wings on this one are done with shapes and you can see the difference. There's a thickness there, uh, a clarity there that would not be there if that was just drawn with lines. Lines, as you scale it down, get very, very thin, very, very small. They're hard to reproduce properly. Um, but if you design with bigger shapes, you retain that clarity um, even at a very small size. Number three, always keep the pick material in mind. I have a series of picks here that all have the exact same logo, but they, the logo comes out a lot better on some than others. Uh, look at this one with confetti material, for example. The logo almost disappears in it. So if you, um, if you want to use a really busy pick material like this confetti, Think about a really simple logo. If you start getting real, really detailed, you're going to lose a lot of that because it's going to be overcome by the, the busyness of the pick material. Number four, think light and dark. A lot of people think that if you design a really cool uh, image to go on a light pick, all you have to do is flip that to a negative and it'll work on a dark pick. And that is not true. If you flip it to a negative, all of a sudden it looks like a photographic negative. Um, and it, it, it just doesn't look right. If you have a design that works good on a light pick and you want it to look good on a dark pick, you have to redesign it and change it so that the light areas still stay light and the dark areas still stay dark. A perfect example of that is these two picks. 
These were done for War, uh, Warmoth Guitar Products 40th anniversary. One is on a dark pick, one is on a light pick. And if you look closely, you can see that the design, though it looks the same at first glance, it's completely redesigned so that the light areas of the design stay light and the dark areas stay dark. Number five, keep the shape of the pick in mind. Uh, you know, picks are basically a reverse teardrop shape. And so you don't want to try and put a design on them that basically has a pear shape. It's going to be hard to fit and to make it fit, you're going to have to reduce it even smaller. Um, so, so keep that in mind. This is a one that I think really uses the, the shape of a pick well, going back to this wings one. It fills up the top and it leaves the bottom a little more empty. And that's another part about thinking about the shape is that the, the tip of the pick is going to get worn. And so if you have a design that is reaching down into that area of the pick, it, it's going to get worn away. You also don't want to get too close to the edges first because it can't it won't print very well as you, if you get too close to the edges and two because if you do pick scrapes or anything like that the picks gonna wear away and you're gonna lose the design now a couple other things to keep in mind uh, going back to the material of the pick I have a couple of picks here that I had done from a different manufacturer and you can see that this is actually a white pick that they painted black and as the pick wears out, the white shows through. It just looks awful and it looks cheap. And this is one reason why I no longer use that manufacturer anymore. Intune GP does not do that. Um, so, so keep that in mind. Another thing to think about is uh, the difference between single color and full color. Uh, if you get a single color pick from Intune GP, you will not be able to feel the design on it. But if you get a full color, especially on a dark pick, part of their process is to print white under that so that the colors, the full, you know, all the various colors in a full color design pop out and look bright and brilliant. They print white under that, uh, which is different than this. Um, they only print white under the design. And um, you will be able to feel that with your finger. So this, this Aaron Tunes pick or this one I designed for uh, a Bon Jovi tribute band, uh, you can feel that under your thumb. And I actually kind of like it. I like that tactile feeling of it. Um, but just keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that on their website, Intune GP uh, has a, a page where they do recommendations of the best colors of ink over various colors of picks. And I would advise you to follow their advice. <laughs> they, um, They've been doing this a long time and they know which colors show up the best. Now, another thing that they say on their site is that certain colors or materials of picks wear out faster. I think it's glow in the dark and camo, they say wear out faster. And I can tell you for sure that that is true. I had some camo picks done and I think that they look really cool, uh, but they do wear out super fast. Of course, if you're throwing them out into the audience from the stage every third song or so doesn't matter so and last but not least double-sided picks uh, if you want to pay the, a little bit extra you can have double-sided picks made and double-sided picks are really cool because they um, they it helps to keep the design simple when you can split it on two sides. Uh, one thing that a lot of people do is put the band logo on one side and a signature on the back. Or if it's a company, you put the company logo on the front and the contact info on the back. So uh, you can always think of that as an option if, you're, if your pick is getting too cluttered and you have a lot of information uh, that you want to get across on the pick. Um, and that's it. Those are my five tips plus a few bonus tips. Uh, for designing a killer guitar pick. I hope you found that useful. Um, and I'm always fascinated by pick designs. Designing for a guitar pick is really an art of economy. You have to tell a big story in a very small space with as few lines or shapes as possible. So I'd love to see your um, picks that you've designed. I'm always interested in that. And yeah, that's it. Uh, remember, music is its own reward, and I will see you next time.